Welcome to the Dynasty Series. Here we will take a look at some of the greatest dynasties in sports history. Looking at the teams, the players, and the overall accomplishments, today we're looking at the 1995 to 1998 Chicago Bulls. Now, please keep in mind I'm not picking them over the 1990 to 1994 team because I think they are the best all time. I believe they are two distinctly different teams with different personalities and thus deserve separate videos. These Bulls teams would see the first to win 70 games in a regular season, the return of Michael Jordan after a short hiatus, and had an almost magical feeling when you watched them play. It's hard to quantify, but even as they were beating up on my home team, they were fun to watch. These Bulls were must-see TV. Yes, Jordan and Pippen were the face of the team, but the rosters were filled with versatile players and role players who did what was needed to win games. In the 1995-96 season, only three players averaged more than 10 points per game for the entire season. To no one's surprise, they're Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and Tony Kukoc. They accounted for, on average, 60% of the points scored on a nightly basis. They had a single player that shot over 50% from the floor that season. And who do you think it was? Nope, it wasn't Jordan. It was actually Steve Kerr. Kerr was the only player to shoot over 90% from the free throw line as well. Efficiency was key for this team. Only Scottie Pippen had more than five assists per game and a single player averaged double digit rebounds. That was none other than Dennis Rodman who pulled down 14.9 per game, well over double the closest teammate. After cruising through the season, they went into the playoffs and got the job done with a record of 15-3, beating the Gary Payton and Sean Kemp-led Seattle Supersonics to win the championship, capping off an all-time best season and starting their second three-peat. The expectations going into the 1996-97 season were high, and this team did not disappoint. Following up a historical season is never easy, but the Bulls followed their 70-game win season with a 69-game win season. An increased role for some players due to injuries gave them the chance to shine. Steve Kerr, Luke Longley, Jason Caffey, and Ron Harper really stepped up and did what was needed to fill in. Rodman was his outrageous self, missing 11 games due to a suspension for kicking a cameraman. Largely intact from the year before, the team chemistry paid off, cruising through the playoffs once again at 15-4, capping off their second consecutive championship, spoiling the season for John Stockton and Carl Malone, keeping them without a ring. This is the year that Steve Kerr hit the winning shot. Here's his side of the story. Michael, in traffic to Kerr. And there have been some misconceptions about what actually happened. I wanted to clear it up. When we called timeout with 25 seconds to go, we went into the huddle. <laughs> He comes off, I'll be ready. Bill told Michael, he said, Michael, I want you to take the last shot. And Michael said, you know, Phil, I don't feel real comfortable in these situations. So maybe we ought to go in another direction. Why don't we go to Steve? So I thought to myself, well, I guess I got to bail Michael out again. Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. The shot went in, and that's my story, and, and I'm sticking to it. The final year of the three-peat is, of course, the 1997-98 season, and has been covered in depth in the documentary The Last Dance. A bit down in wins, but still an impressive 62. This was the swan song season for both Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson, at least as the Bulls coach. Despite injuries to Pippen, who played in 44 games, and Kerr, who would play in just 50 games, the Bulls overcame a 9-7 start to once again finish with the best record in the Eastern Conference. These playoffs proved to be the most difficult of the championship run with a 15-6 record. After easing through the first two rounds of the playoffs, a matchup against the Indiana Pacers, led by Reggie Miller and coached by Larry Bird, was waiting for them. This was seen as some by a chance for Jordan to finally get his over Bird, against whom he had an 0-6 playoff record when he was a player. This was the toughest matchup in these three years as the Pacers would push the Bulls to seven games where the Bulls would only win by five points to advance. A repeat match against the Utah Jazz would once again keep Stockton and Malone without a ring as Jordan drove the dagger in with this iconic shot. This may be one of the best teams in NBA history, but are they truly number one? As with all things sports, no one will ever agree and debate will rage on for decades. I do, however, believe that they are one of the best and would compete in any era. Thank you for joining me. Please hit that like button if you like the video and subscribe so you don't miss future videos where we explore more sports dynasties throughout the years.